Warning, you should not attempt this if you are not comfortable or have experience lifting heavy objects. You should consult a professional if this is outside your comfort and experience zone. James and Camille and Mr. Steady and SV Chartea are not responsible if you drop your mask trying this. We're simply showing you how we went about it. Stay tuned for Action of the Afton footage and James will explain in detail the setup they used to de-step the mast on SV Tritea. Hello friends. So, it's a big day. We just rigged up an A-frame to unstep our mast in the water at the dock. Um, so we've done this process before. Um, we're recording this inside right now because it's a little breezy out. So we're going to walk you guys around and show you what the setup is. And if there's some wind noise, we apologize. Not, not a lot we can do about it at the moment. But um, yeah, so big day. Time to drop the old mast and uh, move forward on putting up the new rebuilt mast. So let's go take a look at what the setup is. Okay, so we built a 20 foot A-frame. We have guys going fore and aft, tightening it down, locking it in place. We have little feet screwed in so it's stable, pushing against the tow rail. We have a block up top, go into a choke point. Go into a choke point that me and Camille figure is like where the center of balance is for the thing because offsetting with a little bit more weight down below. And uh, yeah, basically all you do is get it all taut. You put tension on your choke, which is also has a tail coming down that's tied to the winch so that it doesn't let the choke slide up. We have the, the lifting line going over to the Black Lotus. So it's Camille's, Camille's gonna be on the winch. So she's not directly under the mast as we're lowering it. Um, basically you put tension on it and then start undoing all the rigging see how she feels once she's free then you just lift her up get her off the foot and then start slowly paying out that line and set her down on the deck that's all there is to it so let's clip you guys up somewhere so you can watch this thing in a time lapse and uh, get it done Got the rig down, no problem, easy. Let's see if there's a coin under here. It might be under the second step, but let's see, what's up? Look at all this debris. Gross. No coin there. We'll check back once, we'll check back once we remove this part. You pleased? Dude, it went perfect. Like me and Camille talked and talked about where the center was we tied it here it was the exact choke point it it balanced out perfect it was so smooth yeah no wiggle the a-frame felt um and we really... had two wicks like a tugboat drove by yeah awesome super stoked okay so we checked it out no coin that explains all the hardships we will have a coin i promise
dude. Extremely smooth. Right? So good. And we beat sunset. <laughs> and we got the full moon. Uh-oh, he's talking. Oh, we're lucky it happened right before these guys moved this big boat. <laughs> Here's inside. Look at all that chaos. Look at all that chaos. Cut for your big one. <laughs> So, as I said at the beginning of the video, we're not responsible for anyone attempting this. If it goes wrong, um, Camille and myself have a combined 20 years experience with rigging heavy and very expensive stuff, much more insane than this mast. Um, we both worked for many, many years in the art world um, rigging very strange objects. <laughs> Um, that were of very high value and being lifted on on cranes and in museums and you name it so we have a great deal of experience in this department um, and understand like you know balance points and and how things are gonna fly once they're in the air and, and stuff like that so that being said we want to make this video to show you guys that it is possible to unstep your mast of a reasonable height at the dock <clears throat> and save yourself a ton of money on going to a boatyard if possible. Um, people have been doing it this way for a very long time. This is not something we invented. It's a known process uh, and technique for de-stepping or stepping your mast. There are other ways you can do this as well. Um, some people like hook up a spinnaker pull or a boom and they just set the foot in place and they crank it with a winch. That's a way you can stand it up by yourself if you only if you're completely single-handed. So you can look online and find a bunch of different ways to go about this. This is just how we went about it with an A-frame. So the first thing we did is we went to the hardware store and we bought four 10-foot 2x4s and two 8-foot 2x4s. Got them back to the dock and uh, laid them out and I'll put the 10 foot 2 by 4s end to end and then I married them with an 8 foot 2 by 4 in the center of those so we had 6 foot at either end um, uh, on the uh, the leg of the A frame um, and I used you know 2 inch deck screws and put a ton on both sides um, so that it was nice nice and secured and then um, laid the two uh, legs, those are our legs, laid the two legs together facing opposite directions and um, drilled a half inch hole about, I think I drilled it eight inches down from the top so I could send a bolt through. You could go a little lower than that depending on where your pick point is, but um, that's where I was comfortable doing it. Um, so then, and that's all it takes to make your A-frame. Now the mast we took down was 35 feet tall. Um, I would feel comfortable doing this process with a mast up to maybe 40 feet. I don't know that I would want to do it any higher than that. Uh, I think it would take something kind of more robust. It starts to get real chattery once you get up above those levels. But um, that's just like where I'm comfortable going. Um, we had done it, we had done the same process previously when we took down our new mast off of the junk boat here at, at um, 
new marks which was a santana 30 and when we did that one the cabin top was very weird and the, and the height and everything and that mass is 33 feet and i only made that a-frame 16 feet tall i used the same process of mending it but i only used eight foot two by fours and i was not it was a little more unwieldy because we couldn't get the choke point kind of high as as high as we wanted because i only made it 16 feet so definitely this time when we made the 20 foot one it was a lot there was a lot more in the comfort zone um we picked this thing and it just floated perfect and found her balancing just laid down it was very smooth so the higher you can get above your sort of like balance point the better off you're going to be <clears throat> because you got to think about your drop with your block and everything so next step is to remove your boom and everything off of your boat just clean your deck so there's nothing to trip over there's no obstacles take you know, obviously take your mainsail off your boom off everything get everything ready to go so that once you get your a-frame up and everything rigged then you can just move on with the process once we got that cleared out we put the a-frame on the boat and um we just fed it through spread out the feet we placed each foot between our forward lower spreader chain plate and our cap shroud chain plate and um, you want to make sure that they're not against those chain plates because you're going to have to loosen those turnbuckles and remove the pins when you get ready to unstep the mast. so you'd be a bummer to get everything set up and realize that you're pinched up against there and you can't remove your rigging so keep that in mind when you're setting everything up but um yeah we spread out the feet and then we just hooked up a halyard to the um top of the a-frame hoisted it up into place and then once it was up uh camille flew me up in the bosun's chair and um i kind of secured everything okay so we got our a-frame standing up now you want to tie guys forward and aft now the forward guys we took down to the bow stanchion uh base tied that off um camille tied a trucker's hitch on all four guys um and then the aft guys we we ran those down um made those a little bit shy and tied those just forward of the our self-tailing winch now i like i like to drill two holes in the top of the a-frame for the aft guys so you're going to run guys that run aft and you're going to run guys that run forward from the top of the a-frame and um the uh, forward ones i just tied around the um this sort of like hinge point but I like to pull those, especially the way we had it set up. We set the A-frame up this time on the front of the mast, which I liked better. Um, we did it behind the mast on the initial drop for the old boat because just because the way the deck was on that boat. And um, it fought us a little bit. But um, overall, you can put it wherever makes sense for you. Wherever you have the most room for your mast to fall when it comes down not fall for your mast when it comes down like if you have if you're if you have more room forward of your boat because of how your boat's in the slip then maybe it makes sense to do it on one side or the other one thing i will say is that make sure when you're tying your guys that you don't you know you might want to be like let's time as far out so that they're real stable which is a true statement but you need to look at where your spreaders are going to come down because they can come down and hit your guys and then you're gonna have to maneuver them around your guys so just keep that in mind when you start tying it up we tied up our aft guys just shy of our self-tailing winch so that we knew that that those spreaders weren't going to get caught up on those the a-frame guys then i went ahead and hooked up the um the block off the a-frame i just used like a, a bowling loop for that and um just a single block it was actually like a two-part block but we it wasn't like we did a two-point purchase we just did a single you can just use a single block that's just what we had on hand and then we set up our choke point now our choke point you want your choke to be able to constrict around the mast so that it that does the picking of the mast itself um and the best way to make sure that thing's not going to slide the easiest way to do it is you just run the tail you run a long tail off your choke point and tie it around your winch and 
and uh, use bowlins for everything. Don't use snap shackles on any any of this. Um, I'm sure nobody doing this would, but just just you got to tie bowlins on everything. Um, so yeah, you have your you have the the very tail end of your choke point around your winch. It goes up. It chokes at the point where you think the mass is going to balance. Now the thing to keep in mind is that mass tend to be heavier at the bottom because they taper to remove weight from a loft. There's also the winches and everything, so your your balance point isn't necessarily going to be measured exactly in the middle of the mass. It's going to be somewhere shy of the heavy side, um, towards the heavy side, rather. So me and Camille looked at the mass, and we both were like, okay, we both felt like this is where the, she was going to pivot at when once we lifted her up. And um, it ended up being the exact spot. Um, and that so much of that comes from like a lot of experience of picking weird things. Now another thing you can do to help a choke from sliding, uh, which your tail should do it, but a cool trick that you can do is um, you can wrap it with shrink wrap, especially the kind you get from like a moving store with a handle, you know, you get it really tight and then you get your choke right around that shrink wrap. I have picked up 2,000 pound blocks of marble that were glass smooth on all sides where they were too heavy. There was no way for us to lift it to get any kind of sling underneath it. And I've wrapped those things in huge things of shrink wrap and then hooked up professional um, lifting slings to it. And then the constriction around that, it just picked it right up. It's totally insane, but it works. But if you tie this up properly with your tail down around your winch, you're not going to have to worry about that. So, you got your block set up, you got your choke set up around the mast, and then you bring your tail through your block. We ran it to a preventer block that's always on our mounted forward for our preventer for our boom. And then we originally tried to run it to the Black Lotus, which is next to it, so that Camille wouldn't be under the, the mast as it came down. But the angle was all wrong. Um, so we're both confident in the whole setup. The other thing to think about, like, our mast maybe weighs 75 pounds. Like, it's not heavy, but 75 pounds falling from 35 feet can be deadly. <laughs> can also do a lot of damage to your boat. So you don't want it to get away from you, but it's, it's not some kind of insane amount of weight that you're dealing with. Um... So we ran it through the preventer block, back to our self-tailing winch, um, and uh, Camille was on that end, and we got everything set, we checked all our guys, Camille put pressure on it, got the choke tight, and um, then we started like loosening all of the rigging. So leave your lowers for last. So we did our cap shrouds first. We loosened them till they were slack. And then I did my back stay, four stay, loosened everything till it was slack. Just leave everything hooked up. Just loosen your turnbuckle so that it's just like spaghetti. Uh, and then you do your lowers. Again, leave everything hooked up. Just loosen it all. And then once it's all loose, Camille put a couple cranks on that. And then it pulls up. And when it does that, if you're, all your rigging's tight suddenly, you know that you have a, a good pick and that it's it's doing its job. And so once once we saw that, we're like, okay, now we know that it's actually secured by our choke. And um, that's when you can go ahead and you slack them off a little bit with the, the uh, turnbuckles, and then you start pulling all the pins. And again, I do it kind of methodically to where I do the cap shrouds first, and then I do the backstay and forestay and the other thing we did have a safety so we had our our jib halyard we had running forward and then secured so that it was like a double safety because we knew that the the a-frame wouldn't allow the mast to fall forward so our jib halyard made sure that it wouldn't fall aft you know so that was just our our double safety on the whole thing. So get all your rigging undone, 
all the pins pulled and then bring it all back to the mast and like tie it around the mast or tape it around the mast, whatever, so that it doesn't go crazy when you start lowering it. And um, then we released our safety. Everything's happy. Um, maybe have a dead blow hammer. You might have to hammer on the base of the mast a little bit to make sure it's released. Usually masts just sit over a shoe and there's nothing actually securing the mast to the shoe. Usually the, sh the shoe is secured to the deck so they can't move in this direction but the the rigging is what holds the mast down so I've never seen a mast that ha was bolted I mean maybe they exist I mean they'll exist if you have a tabernacle which is like a hinge but most masts just sit on a shoe if they're deck stepped um, so yeah and we loosened some bolts on our mast plate just to make sure because it was like a double mast plate on our boat and we're, we're like well let's just loosen them just to see what happens and it sure enough it just popped up and it had just a regular shoe on it um so yeah then camille went she released the uh the jib safety halyard safety and then she went aft and um gave a couple cranks until we were flying just high enough um and then i started maneuvering the weight out and then the thing to think about too the more you can keep that your block um, and everything directly under that a-frame the less it's gonna fight you so like in our in our in, and there wasn't enough weight for me to be concerned about it but if that if the lines like this then it's trying to push you it's trying to find that center drop so you know the the more you can keep your your bottom weight pulled away so that that's a, a vertical drop um, the less kind of resistance you're gonna have um, but the way we did it on this one is like basically I just moved it aft a little bit she lowered it a little bit and then I moved it aft and braced it against the bottom of the um, the uh, windlass and then she lowered it a little and then I lifted it and then braced it against the like the um, the stem she lowered it and then by that point we could just lay it out and there was a point to where i even took my hands off and it was just like falling perfectly level um and then we just set it on the uh the pulpits <clears throat> that easy now when everything's set up and you're ready to do it this is not a race you do not you don't want this thing to take off you know so everything's set up properly you're ready to go just ease it down the part that takes the longest of this whole thing is setting everything up and making sure everything's safe. But when it comes time to drop the mast, it only takes you a couple of minutes to get it on deck. But that's not something, you, there's no need, like if things feel unstable, don't pay it out quickly because that's when momentum happens and that's when things break and get dangerous. That's like shock loads. That's when things go very badly. So go very slowly, take your time and you know make sure that there's no environmental things that are going to affect you like if the winds are getting up we had a little bit of wind but me and camille were both comfortable with the level of wind versus what we were doing the only wild card for us was there there were a number of like tugboats driving by because we're in the la harbor so there were wakes happening but none that were great enough to make it so that we felt like we couldn't get this job done safely but yeah make sure that you're not trying to be in a hurry when you're doing this just like you know take your time talk about it don't lose your cool you know whoever's helping you like communicate with one another so everyone knows what's happening on either end and um, everything goes smooth if you just like stay calm and make sure that everything's set up correctly um, and then you just slowly pay it out and she'll come down and lay down happy but you know, it's very important to remember that, that um, it's not a race. Just just be safe and do it slow. And we left our A-frame up and everything because we're gonna use the exact same process to stand our new mast, um, which will be a separate video. But that's how we did it. And um, there are other videos out there online that show you different ways of using A-frame. They're all pretty similar. Um, and it's a uh, very handy thing to know how to do. Pretty simple. I think we spent like, I don't know, 30 bucks on lumber <laughs> or something. And um, yeah, 
but again you know if it gets away from you it falls it could kill someone or it could you know do some serious damage to your boat so like you know we went over everything many times before we were like okay you know and again we've done this before so we have the 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 benefit of experience with far greater things than this um but also we have the benefit of experience of actually doing this with an a-frame so i hope this video is informative to you guys and helps you guys either um have someone professional help you do this or if you're experienced and you're comfortable with this then helps you do it yourself it's a great way to save a ton of money and be able to do it yourself and um just be safe you know make sure everything is secured make sure you're using quality stuff and uh you know safety first so thanks for watching if you like this video found it helpful give it a thumbs up um, and uh, tell us what you think down in the comments and yeah almost there getting ready to put up the new mast head out to sea thanks for watching fair winds until next time thanks for watching if you enjoyed this episode please give us a like subscribe and leave us a comment it helps us a lot thanks again to all of our patrons your contributions help us get the boat ready for big things. Until next time.